Sounds Arabic, right? The Arabs were here in big numbers. They settled over here. But before uh, the Arabs, let me just tell you a little bit about the indigenous people of Sicily. And I think we've spoken with some of you about it. But there lived three um, people, the Sicans, the Sicils, and then 900 before Christ, 900 years before Christ. So we're talking 3,000 <laughs> years ago. Uh, the Elamenian people came here from modern day Turkey and they set it all over the Western coast, okay? And uh, the Elamenians came and then 734 before Christ is when the Greeks came and they also settled here and built beautiful Greek temples that some of you have already seen, okay? And by now you guys have heard about all the conquerors, the lasagna of conquerors that have come to Sicily, <laughs> okay? Now, Sicily was always part of the Greek Empire, the Rome, the Arabs, you know, and so forth. And in 1860, a man named Cavour had this idea to unite 20 regions and call it Italy, okay? Sicily was a region and 20 others that are on the boot. So now those regions near France, near Germany, near all those people, those people have nothing in common with Sicilians, nothing. Their blood is German, their blood is French, their blood is completely different. But he had an idea to unite Italy and make it one country, okay? And he had a trusted general. His name was Giuseppe Garibaldi. Garibaldi's job was to go through the regions and convince them that it's a good idea, okay? But not everyone was willing to go along with it. So, you know, the Sicilians resisted, but some of them wanted to, some of them said, okay, you know what, let's, let's see how this is. Garibaldi promised them don't worry, when we unite, you guys are gonna be treated equal to everyone. Of course, by now we know not so. Not so. <laughs> so Garibaldi came here and tapped a thousand men and they were called the thousand red shirts because all of them wore red shirts. And he convinced them to help convince Sicilians, some by force, that creating <laughs> Italy would be a good job, okay? And so these men landed in Marsala. Marsala, again, very Arabic sounding. They landed in Marsala in 1860 in May. And they started going around the island and there were some battles, uh, some bloody battles, convincing Sicilians this was a good idea. And one of the big battles happened on May 11, 1860, in Caltafimi, which is where we're going to today. As we know, Garibaldi won, and we're gonna see a sort of memorial to Giuseppe Garibaldi, which is a very mixed thing for Sicilians. Because some Sicilians, you know, when Garibaldi finally won, he went into the uh, Palermo and raged and stole a lot of gold, a lot of semi-precious stones, a lot, millions of whatever money they had to help fund the new government. And to this day, a lot of Sicilians are very iffy, even though we have a lot of Garibaldi Square, Garibaldi Street, blah, 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 we're going to the memorial of Garibaldi, but other Sicilians are still not, not as, you know, convinced and still think that Sicily should be separate, okay? That's a, but that's a whole different, conversation. So where we're going to today was one of the most important battles. In Tarmina, there's a square of May 15th, April 15th, which is supposed to be when he first um, arrived in, excuse me, May 15th, when he first arrived in the Tarmina area. So he, so each place has some kind of a memorial. So Italy didn't become a country until 1861, so a year later, and very famously Cavour said, this is the mastermind, he said, you know, now we have created the country of Italy, now we have to figure out what does it mean to be an Italian? All the regions have 
different dialects, different traditions, different scenes, different currencies. So that is sort of, you know, and, and what's the language? And why do we speak what's called Italian? Because a man, you guys have heard of Dante, the Inferno, he spoke a Etruscan language. The Etruscan language came from Tuscany. He was a writer, very famous and very influential. And he was able to lobby Rome to make Italian. Do you know that Sicilian was in the running to become the official language of Italy? Oh, wow. mm. Sicilian was supposed to be, because, listen to this, less than 5% of the new Italy spoke Etruscan. They all spoke mm. different languages. Here we spoke the, Sicilian. The, the, the French and the Swiss, and yeah. did they all speak Etruscan? No, only in Tuscany. Oh, just, okay. If you go to the northernmost um, regions of Italy, you'll have people speaking French and Italian, German and Italian, signs in French and in Italian. Because once, you know, those regions were French and Italian. So to think about it, 1861, we became a country. And then, you know, we had a monarchy for a very long time. So we had a king and queen. And then of course the fascists and Mussolini came in. And the king of course was at the time was caught between a rock and a hard place. You know, Mussolini was gaining a lot of power and sort of lost all power. And then as we know, when Mussolini, the fascists fell, and by the way, you bet the Allies came here to Sicily first. They went from the uh, British and the Americans from south, from places like Jella, down south in, um, in the province of Syracuse. And very famously also the uh, Montgomery and Patton said, we gotta, get, we gotta win Sicily first before we can free the rest of Italy. And they came here in 1943 massive um, Operation Husky it was called the American Operation Husky. They came here. Uh, they were very quickly convinced the Sicilians to put down the arms. They tapped the Sicilians to help them. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a very important picture uh, screenshot. This is one of my favorite pictures. This is an American soldier being held by a Sicilian little herder and saying, be careful, the fascists are there. And <laughs> the Sicilians actually clap some, uh, there are footage of the Sicilians clapping when the Americans arrived. Um, but as we know, the war, 1944, June 6th, my birthday, was D-Day. That's a whole year later. You know, Sicily was easy. The rest of the country, not so much. Right. But anyway, so then we were under, uh, so the fascists, so now the Americans liberated um, Italy. And we do have a day, it's called Liberation Day. It's a, we celebrate that in May. It's a national holiday. And then it was the Americans that helped Sicily get back on its feet. Imagine there were no banks, there was, there was no government for about a year. About a year, the Americans, and the Sicilians didn't forget that. You know, they were very thankful um, for the Americans for liberating them. Uh, the only people that actually uh, house. was beautiful house. And do you know who was the happiest that the Americans came? The mafia. Why? Because Mussolini put the kibosh on the mafia. They went running. And, uh, you know, when he was gone, whoop. Back up. <laughs> Did the Sicilians like the uh, uh, Mussolini? Did they like him? No. no. Did they, when they were under Mussolini? No, no one liked him. No one liked him. Especially the Sicilians. He was a dictator, you know? He was a, you know, him and Hitler. Mm -hmm. So, you know, very famously, too, when the Americans landed, first of all, there were some Nazis over here. They escaped. The, the uh, fascists, the Italian, literally put down the, I mean, there's pictures. They just, okay, okay. 